Alright. She used some kind of ninja replacement technique? Yeah, I don't know. It might be. <laughs> Maybe. I'm about to willing to believe anything, honestly. There's just no way they could have switched like hmm. that. Maybe the whole idea is wrong. God, how is this gonna work? Jesus Christ. There has to be some way. I need to figure out how... Okay. I need to figure out how to explain how they could switch. They switched at the moment of death. They switched after death. They switched at the beginning? I only one chance at this. After death, that can't be it. Switched at the moment of death. No, we can't be it. To, it has to be beginning? I don't know. Okay, that seems to be the answer. The two of them may have switched places from the very beginning. What? From the beginning? Yes, from the moment we first met. If that's when they switched... Then they wouldn't have had to switch at the moment of death, right? After all, the one we saw at that point would have already been Mukuro. Uh, hold on. So, you're saying the Junko we first met... ...is actually Mukuro all along? Seems to fit the description, too. Everything. Even the facial expression, too. Eye color. Not really the hair, but like, they could easily dye that with wig or something. Okay. We'd already met her? I had, like, a normal conversation with her. <laughs> when we first met, none of us knew who anyone else was. So Mukuro could have simply told us her name was Junko. And we never would have known the difference. That would easily allow the two of them to switch places from the very beginning. Wait, but Mukuro had a tattoo on the back of her hand, right? Uh-huh. Did you see a tattoo on the back of her? Aww. Junko never had any tattoo like that, did she? Damn, right. She could have hidden it with foundation or something like that. If she did, it likely melted away in the explosion. Exposing the tattoo after the body was extinguished. Oh yeah, face paint, that could be the case. But Again, makeup. Fake nails found on the hands of Mukuro's body. That explains that too. They were the same fake red nails she was wearing when we all met for the first time. But if she really did use foundation. Correct. Even if there was no tattoo on her hand, I couldn't say for certain it wasn't Mukuro. So I'm glad nobody noticed that glaring hole when we were trying to figure out who attacked Makoto. But too bad for you, Monokuma. You can't deny it anymore. Wait, so this whole thing was a setup from the very beginning? If that's true, it was quite an elaborate plan to be sure. Making it look like Mukuro was Junko. The reason such an elaborate plan was possible is because the two of them were working together. Uh -huh. So Mukuro... The ultimate despair teamed up with someone like her. In other words, it would be fair to say that Junko herself was also the ultimate despair. What's wrong? Lost the will to fight back? I think he's just afraid. Afraid? What's that mean, afraid? Fear is only possible where hope is possible. I only have despair, so fear is an alien concept to me. I mean... Despair can come from fear. Fear can. Oh, fucking. And why haven't anymore. you been saying anything? Because it's a <clears> bunch <throat> of nonsense. Junko's my secret identity. <laughs> As if. Then why did you try and protect Junko's real identity? I tried to protect her identity. When did I do that? So he still refuses to admit it, but. He can try to deceive us all he wants. It doesn't matter. Because I've already figured it out. I actually don't know what you're talking about, Makoto. He tried to hide Junko's... <coughs> Sorry. He tried to hide Junko's identity. And not just once. But twice. The first time we... S it was during our last investigation. Uh, the first time was during our last investigation. Yeah. Body was burned to a crisp. Right? Or I'm on the right track. I'm on the wrong track here. Shoot! 
Okay, uh, well, it's time for everyone to accuse me of being the murderer. Okay. Well, if you were I seemed to have Macro's death, you know what that means. Everyone else is punishment time, blah, blah, blah. Okay, good. So it's not saying, like, oh, I'm the murderer or whatever, thank God. I refuse to give up yet. Okay. I can't give up now. Alright, in this context, it makes a lot more sense. For the game over screen to not be a game over. Okay. Uh, two of them. Okay, he's saying. Oh, we're gonna have to go through this again. Up until the deciding factor, okay. After all. Something about concealing Junko's dead body. It has to do with the evidence. How did we conceal a dead body in the first place, though? And that Wait. Junko. She. If she. But. Yeah, blah blah blah. Yada yada blah blah. Yada yada blah blah blah. We got. Can we skip this one? That's one way, I guess. What I have. When did I? Okay. When did he try to? Okay. <clears throat> he tried to hide Junko's identity, not just once, but twice. The first time was during our last investigation. When we were trying to figure out the murder of Makuro Ikusawa, I'm guessing. That Master Makuro did not have a single scar. Confirm that the court matches these characteristics. What is this? The phrase ultimate despair doesn't refer to a single individual, but like-minded group of people. That has nothing to do, no. We're getting way ahead of ourselves with this. Would appear to be a collection of wounds covering her body. Ah, multiple choices. Not like I'm getting a complete game over or a bad ending for this, right? <laughs> Uh, I, I'm honestly completely lost here. Alright, so it's not the, uh... It's not the autopsy. It's not her body, fatal injuries. And it's not her body's description. So that can only mean... I have no fucking control room. <laughs> oh god, this is actually tough. What was the first time he was trying to hide... The our la latest- oh, our latest- wow, I read that so wrong. Latest investigation, not last investigation. Okay, whoops. Sorry, my fault. Okay. Um. So it has to be evidence from our latest investigation. Kyoko's account, what did she say? I test that both stab wounds, uh, okay. Okay. Okay, so there's another. <laughs> Welcome to Phoenix Wright, where you just say objection to everything until you get the right answer. I, refuse to give up. I don't even know why you need a timer for that, because it feels like, okay, that's kind of arbitrary. The two of them. Are we have to do all this shit again? Yeah. Enjoy! Then they wouldn't have had to switch okay, hold the on. Moment of death. They wouldn't have had to switch the moment of death, right? After all. Ugh, this is better and in a very cohesive storyline wise. Whatever the fuck happened. If we're gonna do a final comic strip of this, then Jesus fucking Christ, this is gonna get really, really long winded. I might need to take the entire day just to finish it. Once again, five yeses. Okay, places to check. I don't see how this relates anything. Harp? Oh, sure. Shoot. Oh fuck, I'm just gonna go for everything. <laughs> Even if the one that doesn't seem to make sense. Okay. Shoot. So I was running that one. Let me just think it through before I actually choose it, so... 
We were tried that, we were tried that, we were tried that. The ultimate despair? Yeah, I didn't think I was like jumping the gun there, so I was like, okay, it can't be that. Hidden room present? That has nothing to do with the case, though. Or like, at least, okay, let's try that. Because I doubt that I was like, oh, this dead skull, whatever, is not actually the headmaster, but Junko's dead body, or, or Makuro's dead body or something, okay. This one, again, has nothing to do with it, but whatever. Just in case. Okay, yeah, I was right too. So we're just gonna keep doing this until we get the right answer, essentially. Even the ones that seem to make no sense whatsoever, and so far I'm actually right on the ones that make no sense whatsoever. So that's a good thing. Because I swear to god, if the ones that I would never think of would be the right answer, then that's just stupid. Unless it could actually, like, tell me exactly, like, properly how it could be the right answer, then I'm not going to accept it whatsoever. God, we're getting into, like, really huge Phoenix Wright logic here. This can't be good at all. Okay, back to the basics. Uh, where are we? Headmaster's e handbook. An emergency handbook was found in the headmaster's in room. It's given no restriction to get into the ultimate authority, the headmaster. No, fuck it. I'm not gonna say that. I sure not fuck it. Why not? Okay, good. It's not that. So I'm right on that part. Locker rooms. God. Wait, did I say anything about the secret? No, okay. It's not secret either. I said lights too, so it can't be that. Interview DVD? I mean, I guess that does have Junko in it. Okay, interview DVD. While I was in the AV room, watching the DVD of our interviews with the headmaster. Okay. It wasn't just the monitor, the DVD player itself had apparently turned off- Oh! Wow! Okay, so how he was trying to conceal- Okay, okay, so I'm guessing the, uh, the, uh, the headmaster, the Monokuma room comes in second, right? As to how he's going to conceal the, uh, yeah. That the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Happened to break just now? Now then, when does it matter? Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. That's what failure is, right? <laughs> okay. You made sure I couldn't finish watching the video. And the reason you did that is because you didn't want me to see the real Junko, did you? Oh, yeah. If everyone was in that video, of course Junko would have had to show up. Yeah, I don't remember Junko showing up the video as well. Or Makuri Kusaba. And if Makoto saw the real Junko, it would have been totally obvious that the Junko we met was an imposter. But that whole power outage thing was just a fluke! No, it wasn't a fluke. The Mastermind definitely orchestrated that power outage. And that's not the only time he tried to hide Junko's identity. The Mastermind tried to cover up one other piece of evidence. I gotta reveal this. Okay. One other piece of evidence. The moment of truth. Here we go again! Can get more, please? There we go. Okay. Final strike. Photo of 
Fioko and the headmaster? No, he's not dead. Group photo! Group photo! I guess. Shoops. I think I wasn't. That was too slow. Okay. God damn it, this. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I was way too late on that. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Here we go. The video wasn't the only thing you tried to cover up. You did the same thing with this group photo. Uh, uh -oh. Ooh. I noticed it just a little while ago when we were all comparing the photos we got. Is that the thing that looked weird? In all the photos, there's a certain similarity. An unusual I guess I must be really thinking differently with Celeste's body because What's so uh, unusual about them? Maybe that was just accounted uh, to her personality or something. The unusual circumstances common with all these pictures. Okay, let's see here. Junko's face. Junko's face. Junko's face. Junko's face. Oh. Oh, that's very clever. The one thing common to every single photo is that you can't see her face. That explains so much. The water splash. Sure, sure. Her looking at to Chihiro. Her looking to Celeste. Talking to Celeste. And fucking Kiaka. You had to ruin the plan, huh? That explains so much. Her face would just happen to be hidden in every single picture. Don't you think? And on top of that, in this photo, you can see that Mukuro is clearly visible. So in other words, at that point... The two of them hadn't switched yet. With all that in mind, there's no doubt that the girl whose face is hidden here is the real Junko. Exactly, so... Well, whoever this face looks like, then we need to know what that looks like, huh? Which is why you had to have pictures that didn't show her face. Because if we could have seen her face, then it would have clearly revealed that the Junko in the pictures wasn't the Junko that we knew. Xanadu! <laughs> I believe everything Lakota Is a good is Rush song. You should definitely listen to it. Big fan. <laughs> Junko and Mukuro switched places before we met either of them. So she killed Mukuro, who had taken her place, making it look like she died. And the real Junko is still alive. And she's the one behind this whole murderous situation. This killing game. She's the true mastermind and the ultimate despair. Xanadu times two. <laughs> With this, the identity and the crimes of the mastermind have been exposed. No, no, wait, now hold on. Don't bother trying to deny it. There's no more room for debate. You don't have anywhere left to run. I'll prove everything right now. All the comic strips. Oh Jesus Christ! Okay. <laughs> oh fucking hell! Okay. Okay, everything, everything, oh my god, oh my fucking Christ almighty! Okay, okay, okay. So, blah blah blah, zin, zin, zin. Junko's dead, and uh, that's actually her. It's, uh, dead body, it's, uh... Okay. And then she's seeing all that, it's like... Takes the face. Wait, wait, hold on. That's. Oh, that's Toko trying to be. Okay. And then. BOM! Explosion! How the fuck is Toko still alive after that, though? And. The mastermind here is still. Okay. 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 Let's review all this. Back from the beginning. That's fine. I got 20. Wait, hold on. I should probably save this for the next part. We'll be right back with the next episode, and we're gonna finally uncover the truth. Stay tuned.